So I have a new friend, and that new friend happens to be Country Drummer of the Year 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. What happened with 2019? You screwed up royally. So I got to know Rich Redmond this summer, and it's, it's just one of those times, you know when you meet somebody and you just click? You know when you meet somebody and they're just cool? That's Rich Redmond. So Rich, um, I mean, ultimately outrageously successful in terms of, you know, music. 26 number one hits, 26. He's worked with Jason Aldean Band, he's performed with Ludacris, Kelly Clarkson, Brian Adams, Bob Seger, Joe Perry, Garth Brooks, Chris Stapleton, Jewel, Miranda Lambert, Luke Bryan, Alabama, Keith Urban, Travis Tritt, Chris Cornell, and many others. And you know what? Here's the real deal with this guy. He's awesome, he's cool, he's fun, and he's humble. He's humble. So I want you to welcome this awesome man, a newer friend of mine, Mr. Rich Redman. <laughs> What's up, happy people? Are we happy? How about one more massive, the biggest of the evening so far, hand for Mr. Michael Duffy. So Michael and I met recently at the National Speakers Association and we became like fast friends. And this is a super honor to be here. Look at this card, front row, that I'm holding. Right? Okay, now, if you guys in the back row, you have eyes like mine, it says, happiness rocks! And doesn't it? Yeah. Happiness rocks! Okay, I'd like to start off with an interesting factoid. Our family upbringing and our genes, essentially our DNA, factor into only 50% of our happiness levels. So the rest is on us. Which begs the question, what is happiness? What is happiness? And I think the answer to that question will be as singular and unique as every snowflake that falls to earth, every star in the sky. For me personally, feelings of happiness trigger sense memories that inspire snapshots from moments in my life. Sense memory, sense memory. So what if we thought about happiness in terms of the senses? Taste, touch, smell, seeing, hearing. So for me, happiness is the taste of my grandmother's hot buttered Portuguese roll. <laughs> I grew up in New England, and I was a restless kid, man. I'd be like climbing trees and playing with my Star Wars figures and riding my banana bike and riding my skateboard, and my grandmother would say, Pooks! That was my nickname. Pooks! I answered to Pooks. She goes, Pooks, I have a hot, fresh, buttered Portuguese roll! It'll tide you over to dinner. Tide me over to dinner. Thanks to my grandmother, Ida Paradiso, I was a chubby kid. Happiness to me is the taste of my mother's olive oil Italian fried chicken. This is a chicken breast fried in olive oil with a dash of Italian love. And every time I would go home and visit my parents, my mom would make one of these sandwiches to go to take on the airplane. And oh, the jealous looks. <laughs> Happiness to me is the touch of my lover's embrace. Everyone say hi to Kara. Kara's right there. <laughs> The touch of my lover's embrace, two hearts beating the same rhythm, our breath in perfect synchronization, holding hands, strolling on a sun-kissed beast, maybe window shopping on a Sunday, and maybe the iced coffee in the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> Happiness to me is the smell of my mother's homemade pasta sauce. I know I'm on a theme here, guys. I'm Italian, all right? I like to eat. So my mom, would. this is a time-honored tradition, and when I smell that smell, it means that I'm at home visiting family. Because we're all so busy nowadays, we're all spread out across the country. When I smell that smell, it means that I'm home and we are together. And that is awesome. 
Happiness to me is the sight of waves crashing onto a sun-kissed Caribbean beach, palm trees swaying in the sand. Like, let's face it, people don't go to Sandals Resorts for the food, right? God forbid. No, they go over the location, toes in the sand, drink in the hand. But for me, of all the senses, my favorite is sound. Happiness has a sound. You want to know what it sounds like? <laughs> oh! Wait for it! Mm. Oh, those things were good to me. That thing sounds great, and it looks great. Let's hear it from my friend Drew. My friend Drew brought this all the way from, uh, starts with the sand. He's here in one of the sands. But that red sparkle snare drum reminds me of the blue sparkle snare drum that my dad bought for me in 1976. Like I said, I was a restless, high-energy kid, and I think my parents were looking for an outlet for my insane comic book energy. And they're like, my dad said, Rich, do you want to play the drums? And I said, immediately, yes. So he took me to the Milford Percussion and Guitar Workshop in Milford, Connecticut, and signed me up for lessons. I met my first teacher, Mr. Jack Berge. I was six years old. So here I am at the, uh, the music store. The doors swing open like, like a saloon door in an old western, and I hear this drum solo. Like, it's like someone's really tearing it up. It's like Inagata De Vida, man. And I wanted to be able to do that. Now, to most parents, that would be considered cacophony, like complete noise. But it was music to my ears. And I think secretly it was music to my dad's ears because my dad was an accountant for 30 years, but I think he wanted to play the drums. <laughs> So right then and there, my love affair with the drums began. And then a few years later, my dad got a promotion. The year was 1981. Dinosaurs roamed the earth, and we moved to El Paso, Texas. And this was, this was great. I, I really benefited from this because Texas has always had this rich music education culture. So starting in the fifth grade band, I was in the symphonic band and the jazz ensemble and the marching band and the orchestra. And I just played and I played and I played. And the drums would always be in the corner. And they would like be whispering to me, come play. Complain and they were always there for me. And if I saw a set of drums at a nightclub or a cafe or a restaurant, I would go over and I would look at the drums and I would salivate and I would fantasize about playing the drums. And then I would hang out and I would wait for the band to play and I'd watch the whole show. And then after the show, I'd go up and I'd look to see the drummer. I'd shake his hand and I would ask him questions. And I set some pretty lofty goals for myself as a young man. My goals were to hear myself on the radio, see myself on television, and travel the world on someone else's dime. And all these years later, I was able to do those things. Oh, it was from the sweat of my brow. It was from hard work. It was from persistence. It was from passion. It was from determination. But I loved what I was doing. So it never felt like work, right? When we love what we do, it never feels like work, which allows us to work harder and harder and to cultivate more success. And along the way, I got to do cool things, like play sold-out shows at iconic venues like Madison Square Garden and the Hollywood Bowl and Wrigley Field and Fenway Park and Red Rocks. But to tell you the truth, I would play the drums in the Corner Coffee House for free because I love the drums so much, and I still do. I still do that. Also along the way, I felt super lucky that I found my purpose in life. I found my purpose in life as a young man. You want to know what my purpose is? My purpose is to affect people in a positive way and change lives. And I know I can do that with my music. I've seen it happen. I've been to like 20 countries playing for the US military, and they're not, I'm not going all the way over to Bosnia and Sarajevo to play a version of Brown Eyed Girl. I'm going over there to serve a dish, a slice of Americana, and to spend time with each other. And I consider that my honor. So I, ha I, I love playing the drums. It makes me happy. And I use the drums as a conduit of my energy, and I send the energy out, and then people are happy with my drumming. So I'm I can change lives every single day. So I get up every day with a smile on my face because I get to play the drums. Another thing I realized along the way is that girlfriends would come and go. Even wives would come and go. <laughs> but the drums never left me. They were, <laughs> they were always there. The drums were always there for me. I never got tired of them. They never got tired of me. And that's very powerful when something you love so much can be your best friend. The kind of happiness that never leaves you. Oh, I'm such a lucky guy. And I also realized this, that playing the drums makes me a super healthy person. 
because when I play the drums, I use every muscle in my body. I sweat out all the toxins. Sometimes there's more toxins than others. Maybe at the end of the th night tonight, there might be a couple more toxins. Sweat out all my toxins. I burn calories. I have low blood pressure. And actually I actually have a new friend, Dr. Nadia Azar. She is a new friend. She is a researcher at the University of Windsor. She's doing a four-year scientific study on the caloric burn and health impact of drummers. So she comes out to a show. This is a scientific study. It got funding, guys. Don't laugh. And so she comes out to the show. She hooks up all this stuff to me, electrodes. I go out and I play my 90-minute show. And she comes back and she says, Rich, you are burning over 1,000 calories in one 90-minute show. And you have the heart rate and heart health of an elite athlete. So I'm basically getting paid to work out. That's a pretty good job. Okay, so we talked about the senses and how they can factor into happiness. Now let's talk about just sound in general. Check this out. When you have sound and it is organized in time in a specific way that has continuity and unity, it becomes music. And music, just listening to music, has a massive, we have massive health benefits, physically, spiritually, and mentally. Okay, physically, when I hear music, I want to move my body. I don't know about you guys, I want to dance, right? Uh, so, and I'm not the greatest dancer. First of all, I never have trusted dance, uh, drummers that don't dance. And I know lots of them. I, I talk to the hand. I don't trust you, bro. Because I'm not the greatest dancer, but I will be the first one on the dance floor to show you Mike Carlton. <laughs> and can you imagine exercise without tr music? Can you imagine doing a 45-minute Barry's boot camp session or a tr uphill treadmill running or... Without music, that would be a long, miserable experience. All right? Let's think about the mental benefits of just listening to music. Listening to music is actually reduces our negative emotion, especially if we listen to composers like Mozart and Vivaldi, or if we listen to jubilant types of music like salsa or reggae music. And this is a powerful, powerful takeaway. Music has been shown to actually increase our memory. As a matter of fact, in recent years, there's an award-winning documentary called Alive Inside. Do yourself a favor, get on the Google Nader, get on the YouTuber, and type in, old man reacts to music from his era in nursing home. You could type in any combination of the words, and this video is going to come up, and you're going to see a man who is, he's practically dead inside. He's unresponsive. He's depressed. They don't know what to do with him. So what the re re researchers did, um, is that they, can I take a sip of water? I just like, I'm, look at this. This is my personal handler here. I like this. <laughs> Thank you, Kara, you're hired. Um, what the researchers found was that they could take an iPod and they could fill the iPod with the um, music from that man's era, from his youth, his favorite songs. They put the headphones on him. Boom, he comes to life, he's animated, he's responsive, he's answering questions, he's a whole new human being. That's how powerful music is. And it makes me think about my grandfather, Pasquale Paradiso, God rest his soul, we called him Pat Paradiso. And he was one of the many people every year to get diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And I wish I had known about this film because I would have been able to take its findings and I would have been able to maybe try them on my grandfather. I would have been able to improve the quality of his life. But hindsight is 2020. We love you, Pat. Pat's up there fixing things. He was the best handyman on the planet. Mwah. Let's talk about the spiritual benefits of listening to music. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I see God in nature and music. Music touches our soul. It impacts us in a way that's not scientific, it's not intellectual, it just shows us our humanity, right? And it just shows us that there's something out there bigger than us, and that bigger thing is kind, and it's compassionate, and it's loving. All right, this is where it gets real. This is where I'm going to give you guys tools to stick in your back pocket and leave here empowered. I'm going to give you guys a happiness toolbox. Three tools. The first tool of which is creating a happiness playlist. Okay, so anybody have uh, Spotify, Pandora? Probably both of those services were probably started 10 miles down the road, right? So you're paying $10 a month for all the music in the world, so there's no excuse. So what's on my happiness playlist? On my happiness playlist is the theme song to Rocky. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, dun, 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 dun
He's doing the one-arm pushes. He's running through the streets of Philly. He's hitting the meat. He's downing the egg whites. Or what about Rocky Three? Unch, 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 unch. Unch, unch. I mean, I don't know about you, but this makes me want to be the best version of myself. I want to go get a workout. So if, I, if I'm sensing that I'm a negative Nelly and that I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, time to make the donuts, then I, I play this music and I'm able to set the, reset the channel because I want to live in the land of unicorns and rainbows, right? <laughs> and it's a, it's a hard thing to do. Unicorns are expensive to take care of and feed. What else, what else would be on my playlist? The Pina Colada song. You guys remember this one? If you like Pina Colada. Uh, uh. So, okay, so I never said I was a singer. I make millions of dollars for singers. I help them make millions of dollars. Okay, so that's on there. That puts me in a great kind of mood, all right? Um, let's see, what else would be on my playlist? Ah, oh, the music of Jeff Buckley. Do yourself a favor and listen to Jeff Buckley's version of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. You will be affected in a deep emotional way. Every time it happens to me, I get chills just talking about it. What else is on the playlist? The music of John Philip Sousa. He's one of our great American composers. He was responsible for writing all these amazing military marches. So I have a tradition. Every 4th of July, I go to the Hollywood Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl orchestra is playing. The fireworks are going off. And I cry happy tears without fail because I hear that music and it makes me proud to be an American. Proud to be in this country where I can do anything I want and make all my dreams come true, all right? So there's your playlist, all right? You make your happiness playlist. Here's the next thing I want you to do. It's a life hack. It's so easy. It's a free app. You download it. It's called Relax Melodies. You load it onto your iPad, iPod, any kind of I, and... And what you do is, is you can essentially create your own nature orchestra. So we're talking about thunderstorms and rain and waves crashing on a beach or white noise or crickets or frogs or birds chirping or even the purring of a cat. So you can mix this all together with your Bose noise canceling headphones, right? And just when I'm on a Southwest Airlines flight, which is like all the time and there's crying babies and there's chaos, I just put my headphones on and I have my, my nature orchestra, and I go into a meditative state, and I can stay grounded, and I can stay positive, and I might be even, I get some work done on the flight, all right? So you have your playlist, you have your Relax Melodies app. What's the third, third thing we can do? What is the third thing we're gonna do? Ah, this is, you guys are gonna go, that's kind of funny coming from a guy who gets paid to make so much noise, but I feel like itself is a weapon to fight and fight the game of time to make the donuts, right? So silence itself. Silence is so powerful and it's so hard to find in today's world. True silence. Matter of fact, the great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said, silence is a great source of strength. And there's health benefits in silence. It calms us. It makes us more relaxed. It boosts our immune system. It allows us to tap into our creativity. In fact, there was a study in 2006 that said just two minutes of being silent is actually more effective than listening to music and relaxing your body and your mind. And in 2013, there was another study that found that said not two minutes, but two hours of silence can actually stimulate the growth of new cells in the hippocampus area of the brain, which is responsible for learning and memory and emotion. So win-win. So if I'm in that Uber car and the guy goes, what kind of music you want to listen to, man? I say, nothing. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything. I look out the window, I take in my surroundings, I go inward and I just have that moment. Okay, so I want to give you guys the gift of silence tonight. Now you don't have to close your eyes. Some people aren't comfortable with that. I'm going to watch the clock for 15 seconds. You can go to your meditative state, and I want you to think about all the things that make you happy. It could, be, it could be tasting your mother's food. It could be smelling your lover's cologne or perfume. It could be petting the family cat or dog. It could be spending time with family. It could be listening to your favorite song. All right, and we're going to start. Didn't that feel good? That you guys gave each other the gift of silence in this crazy world that we're living in? Okay. 
So that's a great technique you can have in your bag of tricks. So that's your toolbox. So we talked about a lot of things tonight that make me happy. And there's one more thing that makes me happy. And that is the sound of my drums. And I'm going to share that with you guys tonight. Thank you!